up YouTube? Pete here with Green Dreams and uh, I want to show you all what's growing on around the farm. So we've got a lot of things setting fruit right now. We've got a lot of things flowering. We've got a lot of things almost ripe. All right, so this is for the skeptics. We've had a lot of comments on our videos about bananas. Getting a lot of comments, a little bit of negative feedback about the bananas, you know, people not believing that they're actually doing well for us. These bananas are on no irrigation. These bananas are in a shaded situation. You know, I find bananas, like I had mentioned, this is a jungle species. These evolved in a rainforest. But bananas were not pioneer species. They did not pop up in open fields. You know, just like I just showed you a rack a minute ago that fell over last night, I found another one over here we're gonna harvest for a second for you that's down. It fell over last night. So I've got two ready to harvest. We got another one right here. This one still has the flower attached. You know, typically, I'll remove that flower. So after it's done setting its last row of fruit and it comes all the way down, you know, this is actually taking energy away from the, the banana. So the flowers are edible. There's a little bit of work in that processing, but what I typically do is I cut that flower off of there. That's gonna take the energy that the flower would normally absorb and put that into larger, bigger fruit. So bananas in the understory, 30 miles north of Tampa. It is possible. So come on and step back into the farm with me. You'll see we've got bananas all over, racks hanging. These are the type of problems we have on Sand Hill Farm. Last night we had a rainstorm. You know, man down over here in Rack City. This is, uh, I believe this is probably a dwarf Cavendash. It was labeled as Rajapuri, but I got it through a very large commercial breeder. They tend to mislabel tags. I put this one online and said this was, you know, Rajapuri, and I had many of my banana collectors say, no, that's not Rajapuri. So I was sold it as that, thinking it's probably a uh, dwarf Cavendash. It's okay tasting banana. Definitely better than anything you're gonna buy in the store but not a dwarf namois. That's pretty much just on its own level. You cannot compare. Just very recently, I added probably 10 new bananas over to this area. I had some old ones in the nursery, some that I have, you know, had dug up, some from rare fruit collectors that I wanted to get out here, you know, preserve some of this genetic material because once it starts to pop, you know, this is more propagation material. That could spread these varieties. This isn't a very rare one. It's more of like one of the common ones we grow here, but it's probably my favorite banana on the farm. So what I've just recently done was starting to write the names on rocks. So I used a UV paint and I wrote it on like rocks that I had left over from jobs. This is like probably a large Kiwani skipper or river rock. And what I've done for each clump out here, I've done this because what we find, bananas are one of the things that we do feed on the farm. We give them compost, we give them biochar, you know, we give them all types of love. Um, compared to everything else that kind of thrives on neglect. So if you have a banana and it's not doing anything, it's probably because it's not getting the love it needs. Bananas like food. They're heavy feeders. They like water. So those metal tags that we had on there prior were getting smashed and smushed every time that we came out here and tried to feed these guys. So if we bury this rock, it's not a big deal. We can dig it up. We can find that variety down the road. And it's very important to me to know which variety was which. Yes, I can kind of tell, but yes, they're very similar. It's very hard to tell without seeing those flowers or that fruit. So Dwarf Namois, if y'all are looking for a banana to grow, the best. Y'all might have seen my video on Spiral Ginger. Excellent tasting flower, delicious snack, delicious garnish, goes great on a plate. Phenomenal. We've got a couple of stands of this all around the whole farm. So when you look back here into this canopy, you know, we're part of this nucleus. We're part of this land that's behind us. We're part of this in front of us. You know, this is what's giving us this big microclimate this really tall overstory here. So you'll see some different clumping bamboos scattered throughout this area to also slow that wind as it comes out of that north and penetrates my more subtropical species back here. So we're trying to protect those mangoes. We're trying to protect those bananas back here in this space. A lot of different turmerics, there's white ones, yellow ones, green ones, blue ones in this garden. Uh, just recently added that big banana. There's a little gall and gall in there. And then we have that longevity spinach ground cover. So. This is probably my favorite part of the farm. I really love walking back into this space. You can feel the temperature drop when you get here. So, you know, in the summertime, it's probably 15, 20 degrees cooler in this space. You know, in the wintertime, it's probably 10 degrees warmer in this space because it's holding the heat. It's a bit of a change. So, you know, if you really work smart, like when we're out here on the farm, you know, we start in the hot areas. We work our way into the cool areas. Area. One of my exciting gingers that just woken up, it had been dormant for the wintertime. And the cones aren't quite developed yet, but you know, Paul Mitchell used this ginger for his shampoos or his conditioners. This is called Awapui ginger or shampoo ginger. And you can see, you know, that it, it definitely had a little bit of gel in it at this time. 
But when this cone completely develops, it's gonna get a bright red. If you watch, uh, that one just had a drop or two. It's almost like milking them and they will refill. I have friends that have used this. You know, they've bottled this up before. It's really nice, it's like a lotion. It has a very mild smell to it. It's not sticky. It's soothing, it's relieving, it's really nice. Beautiful looking ginger too, you know adds aesthetic value to the landscape. So, I believe the root on that one is pretty soapy. You don't want to eat the root. A lot of our longans and lychees have put on a lot of new growth these last couple of weeks. You've got a couple that are pushed over here in the edge. And lychees and longans can take down into the 20s. Probably one that I'm gonna start putting more into full exposed areas, especially since we just got those five acres behind us. I'm gonna plant these on the south side of the property in a little bit of a more exposed situation. You know, it's worth a try to me. You know, if it makes it, it makes it. I know I'm gonna get a much heavier fruit set being out there in that more full sun situation. And something really exciting I'd like to take you all back in to see, you know, I talk about planting mangoes, planting late season mangoes. That's gonna give us our best shot because if we do get that late freeze, you know, those flowers are gonna be protected when we have that later season variety of mango. Well, what I wanna point out to you that's really exciting is, this is an early flowering variety of mango. This variety of mango is called Kerry, and it's quite delicious. It's probably one of the best old varieties since they've come out with a lot of these new ones like Sweet Tart and Fruit Punch. Here's that mango. This one is almost ripe. This is, you know, this isn't supposed to happen here. You know, we're not supposed to be growing early flowering varieties of mango in Brooksville, 30 miles north of Tampa. Plants don't read the books. I'm gonna tell you a little secret, okay? I've said that a couple times, so. Worth pushing. We've gotten mangoes off of this two years in a row. Um, this is really exciting. Just next to me on the other side, here's a little guava. Here's a large Saranam cherry. And then here on the other side again, which I think something just stripped my fruits off of this. It was fairly covered just a couple of weeks ago. And it's almost had fruit on it since I moved in is a sapodilla which I'm kind of upset now that I'm looking at the tree. Oh, here's one fruit. Here we go. When they say like a sapodilla almost tastes like a pear dipped in brown sugar. So it's a delicious fruit. I like them better in a dessert. This tree's had fruit on it almost since the day we planted it. It seems like it fruits all year long. It's another one that's not supposed to be growing here. I will say, if you're by the coast, if you're by the salt water, these are seriously salt tolerant, wind tolerant trees. I suggest trying a sapodilla and they're beautiful. They have a really nice form to them. I had done a video on Malanga and Taro and I just want to point out what they look like in the landscape. So everybody plants alocasia, elephant ear, you know, all these plants to, to look cool, but this is a look cool and has a useful pro pro property. You know, this has a root crop. So this and Malanga, both root crops can be used like a starch, used for bread, multiple use, and they're beautiful, aesthetic value, so multi-function. So pineapples has been another one that does really well for us in the understory, and then lots of root crops. So we have turmeric back here, we have canna lilies back here. I even have some arrow root growing over here in the understory. So lots of different root crops, you know, uh, uh, typically gingers do really well in the understory, that's another one. Um, this is a Saba banana. This one can get to be about 25 foot tall. I was just at a client's house in St. Pete yesterday. We planted these two years ago. I probably won't plant sabas on a residential setting again. I'm learning. Um, these bananas were like this. Uh, they were about 300 pounds. They were a little bit of work to haul that tree out after we got the fruit off of it. So, you know, I make mistakes too. I won't be planting sabas in, you know, small backyards anymore. We'll probably stick to the dwarf varieties for the homeowners and the clients. Beautiful banana though. I mean, it's definitely worth growing. Kind of a little bit of a planta plantainish type banana, I guess you could say, maybe kind of starchy, but you know, it makes an unbelievable tree. I mean, literally a tree too. So they, they get quite huge. This is another interesting one. This is called dwarf amarello. I believe it's a mango relative. Typically it's eaten in like a spicy or sour sauce. It's very common in the Asian markets. This tree can fruit in six months from seed. So you can see it's, all, it's completely covered. It's getting some fruit on it right now. Grows fairly quick. It's been in the ground just over a year. Here's some of our uh, jackfruit seedlings. I believe that's a lesser gall and gall. Here's a Fairchild Canistel seedling. So when we were at Fairchild Gardens a few years ago, got some seeds. We have a couple of Canistel seedlings from that Fairchild out here on the farm. I planted this tree myself when it was about just over knee high. This is a Japotacaba here right next to me. And these are supposed to be very slow growing. Gotta say, this is a pretty good producer. It's growing pretty fast. I'm really surprised how it's putting on growth here in the understory. I mean, 
You know, this tree is as tall as me. It's doubled in size. They're not supposed to grow this quick. Another really interesting one I'll point out while I'm over here. Not supposed to be growing here and kicking butt. Green sapote. So related to mame sapote, and I believe it's grafted onto a mame rootstock. I haven't even tried one of these yet. I got it from a collector friend. Green sapote. It's really pushing some new growth. Beautiful looking tree. Kind of that canistel-like long leaf to it. A little bit skinnier than the mame itself. It's doing awesome. Never defoliated, never gotten brown leaves here in the understory. Here's another mango. Here's some more of that blue porter weed. That does really well for us in the understory. This carambola was just topped out. So I just top worked a lot of trees in this area. This is that fuang tongue. Here's a little baby carambola on here. These are super, super heavy producers. Um, you know, these, these trees I would say are overachievers. They do really well in the understory. Very wind intolerant. It was getting so big, I had to top it down to make that fruit a little bit more accessible. So, um, this is a really exciting one for us. This is bay rum. I say really exciting like every other plant here on the farm, but it has an unbelievable smell. So, scratch and sniff that one. Bay rum, pretty awesome. Um, here's a large jackfruit. I just took about 10 foot out of the top of it. I'll shake it for y'all so you can kind of see it. I mean, so over here on this side, we've got Rolenia. This is another one that can fruit very quickly from seed, supposedly like a lemon meringue pie. I haven't actually even tried one yet. I'm really excited about this one. And you can see in the understory, we've got a little bit of uh, sweet potato. We've got that water leaf, that Thai ginseng. This is an excellent perennial vegetable. Nice, crunchy, hard leaf. And I've had some passion fruits fall over in this area in the last few days. And speaking of that, here we go. You know, we start these at the bottom of the tree. Sometimes we'll put a piece of bamboo up to kind of get them going, get them up into the tree and the fruits fall when they're ready. Doesn't get too much better than that. So if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna snack. I'm not gonna let this thing go to waste. Mm. Passion fruit, delicious. Here's another passion fruit vine. This one's about a year and a half. You know, this is a young vine you could see. Maybe it's got a two inch caliper to it. Here's that little piece of bamboo that I used to get it started. You know, now it's all the way up and over in this oak tree. So this star fruit over here is completely covered in fruit also. This is an interesting perennial vegetable. This is called Thai pepper leaf. And this is covered in baby fruits. I mean, there's literally hundreds of these little guys on here right now. And caramboa or star fruit actually have edible flowers. They're quite sweet. They're nice for snacking. Not every one of those flowers typically set fruit, so you can always pick a little couple for snacking, you know, and the rest will end up setting for you. So, carambolas are doing really well right now. I have a big ice cream bean here in the back. Experimental to say the least. There's another Japotacaba. Lots of jackfruit seedlings, you know, we start them all from seeds around here. I've only done one or two grafted ones. Here's another carambola. You know, I have 15 carambola planted here on the farm. We've definitely kind of overdone it. And I'd love y'all to see this. Here's another understory banana. Look at the size of that flower. That's come out in just the last few days. So over here on this tree, you can see these little tendrils on this vine. This is uh, chayote. And it's basically like a tropical zucchini per se. And I planted one of these, the fruit itself, and it became a big vine. And we've gotten multiple harvests off of this. Sometimes they're just laying out here on the ground when I come by. Super tough super easy crop to grow. So if you find one of these in a market, I'd suggest putting it in the ground and trying it out. This is a fun one. This is sugar apple. So here is a little baby sugar apple on here. You can see it's a beautiful little fruit. It's like a composite type fruit, almost kind of like a pomegranate. When you open them up, it's got a bunch of little seeds in it and a lot of flesh, very sweet, kind of creamy. Uh, I believe they go for like six to eight bucks a pound. So they're super easy to grow. Um, hope you all enjoyed my little tour around the food forest. The next one will be from a drone. Next one after that, I want to show you all the nursery expansions that we have going on. Please like, subscribe, share. Appreciate all your support. Thank you.